Welcome back to Coding Commanders. I'm Commander Candy and today I'm going to show you the top 10 most useful Linux commands. Number 10, find. The find command is used to search for files in a directory hierarchy. We're going to start off by typing find, then we're going to type the directory or directories where we want to start our search. Next we'll type the options and then we'll type what we want to find. For example, let's say I want to find a file in my home directory. I want to search for it by name, and the file's name is nurse.py. We did find that file, but if you notice, we didn't have permission to search everywhere. So if we wanted to look everywhere, we could simply type sudo, followed by the command, enter in our password, and now we do have permission to search in every directory. There's many different options you can use with search. Let's say I just want to search for every single Python file within my home directory. I can use the asterisk and there you go. Here is all the Python files. Now let's say I want to search for all my website files that begin with GD script. This will give me a list of all my GD script web lessons. You can even search by a specific permission. I'm going to search for permission 666. Now I'm going to search for a photo that starts with the word Harley, but I'm not sure if it's in my downloads or if it's in my pictures directory. And now I see it's located in pictures. Number nine, ping. Ping is used to send ICMP echo requests to network hosts. ICMP stands for Internet Control Message Protocol and it is used by network devices to send information about their communication with other IP addresses. An echo request is sent to determine connectivity. You may want to test if a network is up and running, or you may just want to test the network speed. By default, a request is sent every second. You can change the timing by using the interval option. Let's speed it up to every 0.25 seconds. Number 8, rsync. rsync is a fast and versatile tool that is used to copy files. You may use it to copy files locally or transfer them to other servers. rsync offers many, many options so the user controls the terms of each file transfer. And rsync comes standard with most Ubuntu distributions. We will start off locally. Here is the basic command configuration. We won't use any options in our first example. We are copying a file called battlebackstory.odt. It is in our documents directory. We will put a copy of it in our code practice directory. Let's run our command. Now if I go to code practice, you can see the file is there. Now let's look at the command configuration for transferring a file from our local machine over to a remote server. This time we're going to use the option dash A. Dash A is going to copy all the files and directories within that directory recursively. It's also going to transfer over all the permissions and the ownership. Group. Modification time. And even symbolic links. Dash A is also referred to as archive. Now we are going to plug in in the location of the directory that we wish to transfer over to the remote server, which is our entire code practice directory. The remote user's name that we're giving a copy to is Commander. And for a remote host, I plugged in the IP address of our remote server, and we're going to transfer it over to Commander's home directory. Now let's test our command. We are now logged into the remote server, and can see, code practice is in fact there. There are many more options you may use with rsync. Dash Z is used to compress. Dash Q will only show errors. Dash R is recursive. There are many more you will learn on your Linux journey. Number 7, SSH. 
using SSH, you can log in and execute commands on a remote server from your own local terminal. If you do not have access to the SSH command, you can install OpenSSH by typing these commands. There are instructions at codingcommanders.com slash scp. Here is the basic command configuration. We are going to SSH into Commander's account. So we plug Commander into the remote user's name. Now we're going to plug in the IP address for that server, and we're ready to SSH in. You can SSH by typing the account's password, or you can create SSH keys. Now that I'm SSH'd in Commander at Lamp Queen, I have access to that server and I can type in commands in order to get information or make modifications. Number six, ifconfig. ifconfig or interface configuration is a handy dandy command that provides a lot of network information, including your IP address. Without any options added, ifconfig shows all active network devices. Common network interfaces that you will see include Ethernet, Loopback, LO, which is what the system uses to communicate with itself, and wireless. Let's look at some common ifconfig options. Dash A will display everything all network interfaces, even if they're not active. You can also specify an individual network to look at. In this case, we will only show information for the ENP network interface. We won't show anything for loopback or Wi-Fi. And yes, of course, you can use ifconfig to create or update configurations. In this example, we are enabling the network called ENP666. We may also want to disable the network ENP666. And of course, we may want to assign a static IP address to a network. Number five, RM. RM is used to remove files. By typing RM and then a file name, you can delete that file from the directory. If you want to recursively delete an entire directory, including all of its files and subdirectories, you can use the option dash "-r", and type rm dash "-r", and then your directory name. Who hasn't used the remove command? Some superhuman who never makes any mistakes and always archives all their work. Number four, mkdir. mkdir is used to make new directories. I use this command just about every day. To use it, just simply type mkdir and then the name of your new directory. Number three, man. For women in tech, man is not always your best friend except for on the Linux command line. You can use the man or manual command to look up manual information for any command. Number two, cd. CD is used to change directories, and think about it. What would you do without the power to change your current working directory? And the number one most useful Linux command is LS. LS is used to list the files and directories located within a directory. If you just type LS with nothing after it, it will give you the contents of your current working directory or you can also specify a path for the directory you want to look inside. What's your favorite Linux command? Comment below and let me know, and if I think it'll be useful to my community, I might just do a video on it. Thank you for watching my video, and until next time, happy coding!